Hey everyone, it's Daniel from VoiceFlow. In this tutorial, I wanted to walk you through how to get table-based data. So these are things like products, as you can see here in Airtable, it might be real estate listings, car listings, anything that can fit inside of a table and has actual products, how to get that into VoiceFlow. Now, most of you might try to scrape this off a web page, and I'll tell you right now, that's not the way to do it. Uh, and the reason is because for products, we want to be able to one, make sure that each product is in its own chunk in the knowledge base so that when we actually call the knowledge base, it's not mixing up products together. And the second one is we want to be able to attach metadata to these products. So that way we can grab things like images, prices, etc., and actually display them into carousels. So to do this, we're actually going to use a very specific API in VoiceFlow called the Upload Table Data API. So on our API documentation, if you go into the knowledge base API, documents and references, is right here at the bottom. Now, we don't have a native button for this yet in the same way that you can import a URL um, or Zendesk. Uh, we may make one in the future, but for now we have this API. So I'm gonna walk you through how this API works. I'm gonna show you an example with Zapier, a very simple one. And then I'm gonna show you a, a simple app that I built that pulls information from Airtable and then syncs it into VoiceFlow. So in this API, there are a couple things that you can do. So the first one, and you can see here on the side, is that I can name the file. So let's call this file products. And for the object, I can determine which fields are searchable and which ones are considered to be metadata. So searchable are the ones that are actually going to be used for the vector search. When I send a question to the knowledge base, it's going to use the fields here to actually search it. So if I head over to my database here, my table, I can see that I've got a ton of different fields and a ton of different products. And for this, I would probably want the name to be searchable. I'd want the maybe the descriptions to be searchable, wherever they are. And I think that's about it. I don't want any of these other fields to be searchable. There's a lot of stuff here that isn't really relevant. But I want to include things like if it's in stock, maybe the like price, etc., and like the SKU as metadata. Back in the API, I'm gonna make sure that A for searchable fields, maybe I'll have name, description, and for metadata, I'm gonna have SKU. And so you can see here on the right-hand side, it's forming the API call. And in the schema, I'm just I'm telling it which columns or which fields will be searchable versus which will be metadata. And these are the only ones that are going to be included. Now, the next part is actually adding the items. So you can see here, if I add an object, I can add a key and a value. So um, I might say something like, for the first object, name is going to be a t-shirt. Uh, I might have a field called uh, description that says this is a shirt uh, and I'll have a field called SKU uh, and the SKU is going to be one, two, three. So you can see here on the side that I've got name, description, SKU, all the values. And then because the schema says that name and description are searchable, the API is going to take the name description and it's going to make them searchable and it's just going to attach the metadata as a SKU. Now let's add one more here. So I'll add another object and we'll do the same thing here. We'll add three fields. We're going to say name is going to be pant. Uh, description is going to be, this is a pant. And the skew is going to be one, two, three, one, two, four. There you go. So that's how you use the API. And now we're going to go ahead and just drop our API key in here. So let's just go to our project here. Let's go to this customer support one. We'll grab our API key and we'll just put it in here. We're gonna hit try it. And there you go, we got a 200 uh, success message. So if I go back to my support agent now and I go in the knowledge base, you can see right here products. This is the one I just imported. Let's just, let's just get rid of these other two. And in here, I've got my two items. Name, t-shirt, description, this is a shirt. Name, pant, description, this is a pant. Now you'll notice that the metadata doesn't show up on the front end. That it's okay, it's in the back end. So if I go back to my APIs here and I use the query API, so this allows me to actually send a que like a question to the knowledge base for my agent. Let me just uh, copy the API key here again, put it in here, try it. Oops, I need to send a question. So I'll send a question that says, uh, what pants do you have? Let's hit try it. And you can see here that it returned uh, a couple chunks. I've only got two chunks in the knowledge base, so it returned both of them uh, because the limit was two. But if I set the limit as one, it'll probably just return the, the pant one. Cool, so here you go, just return pants. And you can see that it's got the chunk ID, the document ID, 
the name, the content. So this is like name description. So this is the searchable stuff. And then the metadata is here, the SKU. So now I can use this in the API step in VoiceFlow. So in my VoiceFlow project, I can either use a API step to call this API, or you can use a VoiceFlow function. So there's some functions available here. And if you go to our marketplace, you can also find more functions. And I'll do a tutorial on creating one specifically to use the knowledge base API and rendering dynamic source and making a dynamic carousel. But I believe there are some ones over here. So if I type in carousel, yeah, you can see an example that Luke made here of basically doing this with Shopify, grabbing the information and creating a dynamic carousel. The next video we'll create will be one explaining that. But for now, going back to VoiceFlow, those would be the two ways. So you're going to, again, hit the query API, retrieve the chunks, and then that way you have access to that metadata that you can use for other things. Now, the other way to do this is to use the knowledge base search step. So this is a step in VoiceFlow where I can see what hands do you have, and I'll just save it to a chunks variable. And now this will let me actually go and search the knowledge base uh, immediately and return the chunks that are relevant. So I can use that, but note that this doesn't include the metadata. So if you want the metadata, you're going to have to use the APIs. If you don't need the metadata, like for example, you're just going to turn this into a summary, then you can just use the search, the KB search step and just plug it into a prompt step. But again, if you want the metadata, you got to use the API to be able to get that today. So that's number one. What's also good about this method is that there are much higher limits on the amount of data that you can pull into the knowledge base when you do this. So for example, on our Pro and Teams plans, you can have way more than 5,000, on our Teams plan specifically, you can have more than 5,000 of these items, whereas you're limited to 5,000 like URLs. For example, you can have many products inside of one knowledge base item here versus when you scrape a URL, it already does this for you. So in this case, each product is a single chunk and that way you can pack much more into a project. So if I go now to how do I actually do this, right? So I've got the API here that we've now walked through or this specific one, the, the table API. But what are some ways I can put this into practice? And there's two I'm gonna show you, but I'll leave this to you to figure out. But the first one is a really easy example using Zapier. So I created a version here. It's just doing one thing. So it's just whenever there's a new update or a sheet in Google Sheets, it's going to send that row to a webhook. For example, here I've got a super simple spreadsheet that I pulled a record from. It just has a question and it has an answer. And then what I'm doing is I am using the webhook custom request and I'm basically just making the API call. So I've got a post request, I've got the URL, and then here is that data schema. And so you remember from our API here, when I go and actually add in the data objects, it's going to populate that in the field. So question, answer, and then actually adding in the objects themselves. So all I've done is I've done that here in the field in Zapier, and it just does it one by one. So anytime there's a new spreadsheet or a row, it'll automatically send that row to VoiceFlow. So this works pretty well. Cool. So this worked. And now if I go to my project here, we can see in the knowledge base, I've got this one here, it's got a chunk in it. The only downside is this is obviously creating one item per chunk, which isn't optimized. So to do more than one item per chunk, you can either do that manually in Zapier, or you can write some code for it. And this would actually be my recommendation is Zapier make all these tools are very limited when you want to start writing and manipulating code. And feel free to use to write code on your own side using VS code cursor, whatever you would like. For me, I want to do this really quickly. And so I actually just made an app inside of Replit. And here's what it does. So it has a front end where I, here, I'll just show you the app. So here's the app. It's got a front end where it has the API key, the Airtable IBI key, the base ID and the table ID. And then it actually pulls that, determines, lets me pick which fields are searchable and sends it to VoiceFlow. And on the backside, it's all fairly simple. So I've got the table API upload endpoint here. And then what I'm doing is I'm calling my Airtable endpoint. I'm getting all of those records. And then I'm putting all the records in the format that the VoiceFlow API requires. So you can see over here, it's putting it into searchable fields and aligning the items. And then I'm just making the API called the VoiceFlow. So I'm doing this all in code, but it lets you create an app a little like this. And I'll link that app below so you can try it out if you want. But if I drop my VoiceFlow API key in here, I've got my Airtable API key as well. Actually, let me just go regenerate this. So here it is. And if I go into the, I think it's a builder hub. Yeah, here. So I'll just regenerate this token. Great. Let's copy this. And then I've got the base ID, which is in the Airtable doc. 
So if I go into help here, API documentation, this will give me everything I need. And it's table two is that gigantic file. So let's get the tape. And then finally, let's get the app ID, which will be in here. App ID. And let's hit fetch fields. Nope, this didn't work because I did this wrong. I, this is, I need this. And let's try this again. Great. And so you can see that this, this app I created not that long, lets me pick. So I've got a bunch of items here. So let's go name is gonna be searchable and metadata. We're gonna go description is gonna be searchable. I don't care about actually putting that in. Short data, short description is gonna be searchable and metadata. Skew is gonna be metadata. In stock will be metadata. And then let's go with regular price will be metadata. Cool. So once I've done that, you can see here that it's formatted this schema for me. So the actual data in the API call, and now I'm going to actually pop it all these values. Hit transform data. And then this basically does what I was mentioning, where it goes through all the items in Airtable, puts them into this description needed, needed by the API. And if I hit upload to voice flow, awesome. So that was successful. And now if I go over to my voice flow project and I hit refresh here, I should be able to see a new item that has the table ID, I believe, as a name. So cool, table ID, and here you go. So now I've got all of my items in here. You can see that there's 25 items for this chunk. So this can go up to thousands. Honestly, you can put thousands of products in one. At some point, you'll probably want to create separate entries for thousands of items at a time. But you can do quite a bit because the limit is 10 megabytes per file. Yeah, I hope that makes sense as a bit of a walkthrough of the API and, and some applications that you can use with it. I'll put the link to the code here so you can actually see how this was built and fork it or copy it on your end as well. And then, yeah, I hope this helped. But the next step we'll do is we'll create a walkthrough of a function that actually takes the data from this and turns it into a dynamic carousel and explain all of the quirks around that so you can make that as well.